behind me is sugar maple. It's in the family Sapindaceae, the genus Acer, and the specific epithet is Saccharum. So the full species name is Acer Saccharum. Let's take a closer look at some of its identifying characteristics. Looking at the bark, you can see like several of the maples. It starts a silvery gray, rather smooth, and then it starts to break into plates that will sometimes curve off the trunk just a little bit, and then eventually it starts to break into strips with furrows in it. Sugar maple is oppositely arranged, so you can see the petiole of the leaves attached opposite each other with a little bud right at where the leaf petiole and the stem connect. Looking at the terminal bud, you can see that the terminal bud is imbricate and on sugar maple it's pointed. I like to remember that by saying sugar maple is sharp, so a little bit of a point at the tip, which will differ from some of the other maples. This is a sugar maple leaf, give you a sense of size. It also typically has one, two, three, four, five or so lobes. And it comes into these broad teeth that have a little bit of a shallow sinus. And a little lighter color on the underside. Maple fruit are Samaras, which are these hanging right here. The sugar maple Samaras appear in late summer or early fall, and to me they look like they have sort of a, a slightly wide horseshoe shape to the way they're connected. The dark, or the, excuse me, the green colored uh, ends here, that's where the actual seed is, and this brown color is the wing. These will split apart and they can be carried. Some people maybe grew up with them calling them helicopters as they would flutter down to the ground. Sugar maples are a forest species, so when they're grown closer together, they tend to have a narrower crown. When open grown, their crown can spread out a bit. And here we see this one is open grown, and so the crown is spread out a little more than it might be in a forest. Sugar maples are known for their fantastic fall leaf color of reds, yellows, and oranges.